Hey everybody, welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got another Transformers review coming your way. This time around we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series number 105, Rise of the Beasts, Autobot Mirage. So as we always do, let's go ahead and bring that box in and take a look first. So you've got your Transformers Rise of the Beast logo there. You have some nice artwork right there. Studio Series 105, Transformers up the side. All over here you've got some more artwork looking good. On the back you've got your product shots. It is big screen inspired. It is the New York City getaway. He converts to 25 steps. It is officially licensed by Porsche. And down here, oh yeah, and then that's really pretty too. Look at that. And then down here, Mirage and Noah speed through the streets of New York City to outrun the police. Down here, you have all your warnings and you have your sad baby. The baby is sad because he's uh, worried about Noah going to jail. So here we have uh, 105 and over here, you've got a close up of Mirage's face with some kind of battle mask on. He is deluxe class. Up top, there you go, and down low, there's all that good stuff if you want to read it. So that is it for the box. We are going to chuck that the heck out of the way, and we're going to move on and get to the meat of this. Behold, laid out here before you is everything that came inside that box, and we're going to start right over here. You've got your little sheet of warnings, and then you have your instruction booklet, and you are left with your one accessory and that background, which we'll talk about in a second. So this is his arm cannon, and... Thus begins a long line of disappointments for this figure, at least in my opinion. So, yeah, it's uh, molded plastic, and that's really about it. You don't even get a complete one because it just fits over his fist. Admittedly, when it's on his arm, it looks good. It looks like it's converted to a cannon. But yeah, this is kind of disappointing. Uh, just getting it out of the way now, the single biggest disappointment, you could make this diameter anything you want it to be. You could put ridges in there, some type of exaggerated rifling, so that way you could use blast effects. But did they? No. No. It's not even close. Not not even close. Not, you, you can't even you can't even pretend. This sucks. Not happy about it. But there you go. That's what you get. And, of course, with the Studio Series figures, you do get this uh, included backdrop if you care to use it. So uh, you have New York looking at its finest there in the background with some graffiti. And, uh, yeah, uh, like I've said before in previous reviews, these are great if you've got the room to display them. I do not, so it's going to get put back in the box. The box is going to go in storage. So there you go. That's everything that came inside the box. Let's go ahead and get this stuff out of the way and uh, bring Mirage in for his details. Here he is, the bot we've all been waiting to see. Let's go ahead and bring Mirage in and take a look at his details. We'll start right up here with the head. So I think the head sculpt and the face on this guy looks pretty good. You've got those piercing blue eyes. You've got that nice blue, oddly enough, asymmetrical off-center crown? I don't know what you would call it. Forehead? Uh, but it's kind of odd that it's asymmetrical, but I guess that adds some distinctive flavor to him. And then you've got the silver face and then the gray. Good amount of detail in the head if you look over to the side as well. So you do get some good detail there. Coming on down, uh, even his throat has some mechanical detail in that area. And then coming on down to the chest. Looks pretty decent, I think. And you get down here to that midsection. This could have used some color. It, it blends in and it all just gets kind of gray. But it could have used some color right there splash of blue or something to really set it off but yeah this looks like the uh you've got your fan there so that uh mid engine mid section engine action going on which is kind of cool and coming on down to his legs legs don't look awful uh the upper thighs or upper legs don't uh, look too bad at all you get down to the lower legs everything gets a little ugly in my opinion but i want to show you the inside here first so you do have some hollow areas going on right there just something to uh, consider it's not awful uh, they do have some ribbing in there so makes up for it a little bit and coming down to those feet this is where I think he gets kind of ugly really would have liked to have seen them do something other than just have Porsche whale tail inner ankle action just I don't know it doesn't it doesn't look great to me I don't know it's just my opinion but I'm not a big fan of it uh, but then you've got his uh, little feet right here in the front. And then you use the back of that tail for that heel. So let's go ahead and give you a side preview of 
Mirage. And it's a really busy side preview. There's a lot going on here. And we're going to do a little bit more detail of that, but just kind of give you an idea. Not really much of a backpack. He's got a little bit going on, but these hip skirts down here really get in the way and get on my nerves. But let's go ahead and bring him in and take a look from the side. So there you have those feet. You've got hollow areas pointing to the outside, which just does not feel very good at all to me. And lifting that arm up out of the way. You do have some mechanical detail right in there. And then, of course, you've got that door. Coming up here, not a lot to talk about in this center area right here. And then let's go ahead and take a look under the arms before we get too much further. At least they're not hollow, so that's some good news, or at least hollow on the bottom. Coming up here to the shoulders. So you've got a couple of points of articulation on those shoulders. This is the, uh, the faux headlights. So if you look at his bot mode, uh, the CGI model of his bot mode, these are the headlights, but... You know, he's got headlights back here, so they just kind of made these faux headlights on the bot mode. And then the arms themselves look pretty good. Now, because these are the windows for the car, they made it out of the clear plastic, so they made the entire forearm out of clear plastic. I kind of like it. I think it adds an element here. It's just something kind of cool about it. Uh, long term, you know, clear plastic does what it does, so we'll see how it holds up over the years. But uh, for now, I think it looks pretty good. And then nothing really exciting here. He's just got fists. Nothing amazing. And then looking up on the underside, you do have those hollow areas right there. But you've got some ribbing. And because it's clear and just the way the light hits it, it's not really noticeable. So nothing awful. Oh, one thing to note. Right up here, you do have that Autobot logo. Sorry, right in the camera. You do have that Autobot logo right there. And then uh, if you want to see the insides of the wheels, uh, you know, so some mechanical detail there that adds to it. All right, so let's take a look at him from the back, and yeah, there he is. He's definitely better from the front, no doubt about it. Let's go ahead and bring him in. So there you've got some uh, Porsche hood, you've got some Porsche wheels right there. Uh, you've got some folded up stuff right here from the, uh, the roof panel. Uh, a little bit of clear plastic right here, and then kind of some mechanical detail. doesn't look too bad. And then coming on down, at least he doesn't have any hollow areas. He's just got those wheels sticking out back there. And then he's got the Porsche heels, if you will. So my take on the overall looks of this guy, oh man, in his bot mode, he's still disappointing to me. I think that they could have done a few things a little bit better here. I do like some of the nice touches. I think a little bit more color would have benefited the figure in his uh, robot mode. But with what you're working here uh, what you're working with here considering it's a licensed vehicle by porsche you know that alt mode is going gonna have to be as close to perfect as possible sacrifices will be made and sacrifices have been made speaking of sacrifices that have been made now we're going to talk about that articulation this guy is such a good example of so much potential gone to waste uh, he's got the articulation most everywhere, but he is hindered severely by running into himself. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. Starting with the head, you don't get a lot with the head. It is technically on a ball joint, but you're going to have to look hard for the movement here. So that is as far up as it goes. That is as far down as it goes. You get a little bit of head tilt, and then you can go all the way around if you care to do so. Go on, coming on down to the shoulders, like I said earlier, you've got two points here, so you have an actual point of rotation, and then you've got a ball joint right under here. So you can bring those up, bring those down, and there you go. Get a little bit lower, get a little bit higher, and then bring those out like that. Go all the way around if you want to, just be careful not to run into anything. At the elbow, you get that much of an elbow bend, and then you have bicep rotation sitting right up here, and then you have wrist rotation. So all that, not too bad. Now, coming on down here to the waist, this is where all that potential is wasted, and I want to point out why. Between this back panel here, this rear window, and these hip skirts, which are the vehicle doors, why did they even bother putting waist rotation on this figure? I don't know. So, you're, you've got waist rotation, but you're going to run into everything. So, you'll get a few degrees, and that's great. And then you can move these up, you can move them down, kind of move them out of your way. All these different things if you want to try different poses. But golly gee, it is a pain in the absolute butt to try to do that. So, waist rotation is there if you can figure out how to use it. 
Now moving on to the hips, same deal here. So you, you've got the splits. You just have to figure out how to get them. So you're sitting on these ball joints right here. So depending on where you locate your hip skirts, you may or may not get as much split. So if you bring them up like that, you're not going to get much. If you bring them all the way down like that, you can get a little bit more if you pull this piece away. Pull this piece away. I said, if you can pull this piece away. Well, I'm not going to bother to show you right now. That's just how frustrated I am. If you pull this back window away, you can get a little bit more. Oh, that's right. You can't pull that away until you pull these lights out. That's that's where it was. It's just this guy is uh, really frustrating as far as that goes. My apologies for the outburst. Uh, so anyway, splits and then thigh rotation, uh, everything. You've got some hip rotation right up here. And you can get a little bit of movement. Uh, not much to the outside, which would be the natural way to do it for posing. But you can get a lot to the inside, you know, so if you want to pigeon toe the guy, go for it. There, there you go. That's a good pose. Uh, but heaven help you if you want to have his legs pointed slightly outwards in a typical anthropomorphic pose. You know, that's about the best you're going to get. Again, unless you figure out a way to work around those hip skirts. All right. So I'm going to count these as articulation because, hey, why not? Uh, of course, you can move these, but then you can move these wheel wells right here so you can swing those out you can swing them back whatever you want to do there it's totally up to you now down here at the knees well before we do that i guess we're gonna do front kick so front kick that far rear kick about that far before you really start running into everything again you could probably finagle your way around and get up a little higher if you want to but you're just going to be fighting all that other junk you're running into all right, so coming down here to the knees, just show you from the inside right here, you've got those two points right there. So you've got a double jointed knee, which would be great if it didn't run into everything. So if you move that out of the way, then you get that. Sorry, my mistake. It is just a single point of rotation right there because this is for this guy right here. Regardless, you get that much knee bend. So, yeah, do with that what you will. Uh, you can move this wheel out of the way. So if you bring the wheel back to its home position or out of the way like that, you could get a little bit more knee bend if you want to do that. But having the wheel where it's supposed to be or the tire where it's supposed to be, you're going to run right into the back of that leg. So, yeah, enjoy that limited knee bend that you get right there. All right, so coming on down to the feet, uh, this is another spot that I'm really not happy about. Not only are these feet in general ugly, uh, you've got this stalk. I don't know what else to call it. It's a stalk with a ball at the end for the ball joint. So yeah, ball joints in your ankles. That's a really good idea. Um, that's sarcasm. And you can see they're already kind of loose. Uh, so you can get, uh, wow, tremendous amounts of outside ankle tilt. A uh, little bit of inside ankle tilt. You can go down that far. You can go up that far, and then you can move these toes. So these toes do have a couple of soft stops. So that will hold the weight right there. That will hold the weight right there. And then you can bring them all the way back up there if you want. Or heck, even that once you get him transformed into his car mode. But yeah, there you go. Um, I think over time, those are going to be a real problem. So overall articulation is a huge disappointment on this guy. He just runs into himself too much. He's not fun to pose. He's not fun to mess around with. And it's going to be difficult to get uh, any kind of nice action poses out of him. All of that extra junk hanging off everywhere just absolutely sabotages what you could do as far as posing. Again, that articulation and the details are sacrificed at the altar of uh, being as close to alt mode perfection as you can get. So that leaves us with one last thing to talk about before we get into the transformation, which I also don't enjoy. And that is your hand cannon. So pick an arm. I'm picking the left one and plug it in. You've just got a little port right there or peg and you go right into the hand and ta-da. Now when it's on, it looks pretty good. I think that that blends in does look really nice. Would have liked to have had more color here. Would have liked to have had blast effect compatibility. How hard would that have been? 
so frustrating. I don't know what they were thinking with this guy. So I know he's a deluxe class. I'm really disappointed in that accessory. You you get a hand cannon, big whoop. I don't know. <laughs> Just frustrated by this guy. Uh, so uh, anyway, that th there's not really much else to say as far as that accessory goes. There's that's his weapon storage. That's where it goes. Done and done. So that covers details, uh, the articulation and the accessories. So let's go ahead and get into the transformation on this guy. Before we begin the transformation, I just want to point out that I find no joy in this. This is not a fun guy to transform, and I will do my best to try to capture everything as accurately as possible in the transformation. But he, he really makes it frustrating because stuff just runs into stuff everywhere. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. Uh, uh, apologies for my frustration. He's just not my favorite. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take those fists right there and I'm going to rotate them so they're sitting up like that. Just kind of uh, turning them outward 90 degrees like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back here and we're going to take all of this and pull it up out of the way. So uh, this is just held in as far as I can tell with friction right up against paint. So that's frustrating. So just do your best here to kind of grab those lights and pull them out. And you can see uh, it's not on this bumper per se, but mo mostly rests right here. But over time, yeah, that's going to wear out. That's frustrating. But once you've got this uh, open right there, you now have the uh, clearance and the ability to, let me move this leg out of the way, to actually take this piece and pull it out of this central area right here. So you're just going to give that a pull and pull that out. So that way you've got all that kind of disconnected there. All right. So once you have this up here, you're just going to bring those lights forward. You're just going to let them rest right here. We're not going to fold these in yet because the next thing we need to do is get this chest out of the way so we can get the arms tucked down where they belong. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that chest. We're going to give that chest a pull and bring that up and then you're going to split right here in the middle you're just going to open these up and they're just sitting on these little double hinges right there and once you do that now his head's got enough room to get through and you're just going to bring that forward like that so this part i, I like that's kind of clever i uh, i'm okay with that next thing we're going to do is we're going to take so you've got these two points right here you're going to take that arm and you're going to bring that arm down on those two points like that and then you can see as you do that kind of where you're going here you're going to make that wheel well all right so do the same thing over here pull that down all right now we're going to bring these wheels down and make sure you've got enough room here so as you bring the wheels and the tires down that you've got enough room to clear don't lock anything in yet you do have little tabs right there and slots just don't lock anything in yet what we're going to do now is we're going to get the headlights aligned to get all this pushed together so i'm going to give these a squeeze right there make sure that those are up where they need to be there you go and once you have that now you can bring these wheels down tab and slot push those in right there and then you've got that Give these headlights a little bit of a squeeze right there and then turn these arms so they're sitting up like that and you can see what's going on as far as the front right here and then that window so you're kind of approximating that area right there but you do have little tabs right in here that you're going to find and push in once you get the angle correct, let's do this side first before I get too crazy with the pushing. Bring that up. And get those aligned. Let's go. So, yeah, frustrations abound. There we go. Get a mind on me. So you've got that little area right there. Just got to get that lined up and pushed in. Easy peasy. 
There we go. All right, so now you've got the front end completed. Something looks like that. And then make sure that you keep your windows kind of approximating the same angle as that windshield right there. All right, and what you're gonna do now is take this waist and rotate this waist 180 degrees. If you need to move those arms out of your way, do so. Probably should have done that beforehand. There you go. So, should have a just absolutely exploded mess that looks like that right now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, the next thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take these feet and I'm gonna rotate them 180 degrees. So they're sitting out like that. And then I'm going to, you're gonna to need to take these doors rotate them right here there's a point of rotation right here as you rotate those up you're going to need to rotate these out of your way make sure that you don't run into each other there so rotate that door up rotate this piece up and then you have a joint right here where these two you're just going to squeeze those together so i'm not worried about this foot right back here just yet i want to get these aligned well, since it's going to get in my way anyway, you can take that tire and then you can see how it's just sitting a little bit lower. That's sitting on a double hinge right under there. So you can actually take that and push it in it's where it's fixed, where it's supposed to be. You have a little tab right there, get up underneath that. And then there's the side of your Porsche. And then let's do the other side, same way. So move that door up a little bit. Move this piece down, and then that's going to allow you to bring the door the rest of the way. Just try not to run into anything. And then let's go ahead and proactively get that tire, the wheel assembly down there. Move this out of your way. Bring that back up. And then you've got that tab and that slot right over here. And bring all these together. And push that in. So you should have something that looks like that as well. So once you get it here, this is where you can take your feet. Right here you've got a tab and a slot. And you can push those together. It's going to make the back of your Porsche. And then turn these little feet in. Like that. And next thing that you're going to need to do once you're here you got this angled slot right here and up under here on those doors you've got those little tabs so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to give everything a, as much as you can trying to keep it together if it falls apart it falls apart you know you can always tab everything back in but bring this all forward oh my bad sorry before you do that you have to arrange this rear end right here or right under here in this uh, ab area so in order to do that, the easiest way that I've found is to actually bend him. And you'll see, this is going to be, this is the absolute worst part of the transformation. So you've got right in here, this little assembly right in here. Before I do that, I do want to show you. So this is before. You can actually see this joint right here. All right. So what we're going to have to do is get all that shoved up. A little bit more that's going to collapse in and i'm going to split these just so i can show you a little bit easier i'm going to get one of these legs out of the way so right here you're going to collapse this in make sure that the legs are where they're supposed to be so right here you're going to collapse that in just like that and that's going to bring all these all this forward it's really tough to get on camera uh, not the most fun thing in the world to do in general. All right, so once you've got that, now you can take your doors, line your doors up. So just kind of lift that up, squeeze all these together. Sorry if I was going off camera. And bring that, bring this. Not, again, not the easiest thing to tab in. Once you got that, there you go. All right. So once you're here, oh man, now you're almost home. This is this is golden. Make sure that's all tabbed together. Keep this down. Leave a gap right here. 
because the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to bring this assembly over. So I'm just taking a look, making sure that my windows are about where they need to be, making sure that my hands are where they need to be. And then you're going to bring this up and bring it back. Now, before I collapse this part in, I'm going to fold this part out. So that's the roof. And now the really, really difficult part, it's going to be more difficult when we transform it back. You've got these big, thick tabs right here that need to go in and tuck away in these areas right here. Man, what a pain, I'm telling you. So when you bring this down, make sure, make sure that you have this back window past these arm windows, if you will, and get that lined up as best you can. And then bring those down, bring those in until they click. And you can hear just how hard those clicks are on this. It's crazy how much force it takes to get those in. All right, now that you've got those there, you've got these little tabs right up under here, and then you've got little tabs up under here. So you're just going to take that rear end, you're gonna line all that up, and give all that a squeeze. And then the last thing that you do here, you've got this little roof area right here. This just fits in with friction. So you're gonna give that a squeeze, bring that down, and then compact everything back up. So do your last bit of squeeze in here on Mirage. Get everything lined up as good as possible. He is gonna be panel-y. It's just the way he is. But there, he is, well, there you go. There he is in his alt mode. So it took us a little bit, but here we have Mirage in his alt mode. And as you would expect, it is a very accurate alt mode being officially licensed by Porsche. So I figured I would throw him up here on the turntable so you could get a couple of uh, nice unobstructed views of him. I think overall here, this vehicle looks pretty good. Minus all those panel lines. I know being a deluxe class figure, there's not a whole lot they can do about that. So I do have a level of forgiveness as far as that goes. Uh, I do think the overall accuracy of the car, yeah, he looks good. I mean, the, the Porsche in the movie, or Porsche, Mirage in the movie was a Porsche 911 Carrera RS 3.8. And yeah, they captured it. So very cool. He definitely looks better in his alt mode than he does in his robot mode, at least in my opinion. So now that we've given him a couple times around on that turntable, we'll go ahead and get that turntable out of the way. We'll bring him in and take a look at his details in his alt mode. Let's go ahead and start up front as we always do and take a look at the front end of that car. And uh, yeah, there's those big Porsche bug headlights. And you know, the paint overall, I will say it, it looks really good, but after you transform them a few times, uh, it, it, it's not that it flakes off, but you know, you've just got areas of imperfection like right up here on these ridges, uh, things that really, when you really start to look close, he doesn't look as good as he does from a distance. So that's a little unfortunate, but yeah, talking about the front here, I bring that up because I do have some imperfections right up here and you can see kind of some areas where he's rubbed. And I think over time, the more you transform him, the more that's going to get rubbed off, which is unfortunate. Uh, but for now, uh, he's passable. looks pretty good there. So you've got those silver headlights and then you've got those turn markers right there grill looks pretty good he doesn't line up perfectly and he is awfully panel-y especially here in the front and up top uh, but they capture the shape pretty well and again being a deluxe class figure i am a little bit forgiving as far as that goes i do think the overall silhouette here man they've done a fine job so continuing our tour taking a look here at those wheels and tires would have been nice if the wheels would have been a different color at least we don't have mushroom pegs so that is a really good thing so uh, i guess count my blessings there you've got the little mirrors right there you've got door handles actually nicely detailed door handles on that and then you do have you can see that smaller window right there and then coming around to the back you've got those tail lights if you look close hopefully you can read that it says RS 3.8 right there on the wing, so really, really cool. I do like that attention to detail. Coming around to the back, you've got those dual exhaust tips and then that long tail, tail light, brake light area right there. Relatively smooth. You've got, the, of course, that split line right there. Uh, and then you've got these slots right there. So you do lose a little bit in that overall seamlessness, 
but I still think overall it looks pretty good. Coming around to this side, it's just like the other side except for your gas cap. So you do have a gas cap right there, which is nice. Again, those mirrors, nothing on the mirrors themselves, just gray molded plastic. And overall, yeah, I mean, good, good on them. They captured this overall Porsche look really well. So here he is from the top. And here he is from the bottom. So you do have visible head syndrome right there. And then this right here is that weapon storage. So this is really nice. We'll just go ahead and just bleed right into that right now. So some of the better weapon storage I've seen in a really long time. I like this. What they've done with Mirage and with Nightbird with her sword making that an exhaust pipe. And then with Mirage here just kind of making it look like part of the car. It's just part of the undercarriage. It blends right in. So all you do is you have this little, if I can wiggle it out of there. You've got these two tabs right there that correspond to these two slots right there. And then you just press fit that in and you can see without it, he's pretty hollow. Uh, even when you look at him from the top and when you put it in there and line it up, if I can line it up in front of the camera, it's okay. Nobody's watching. Uh, and then plug it in and then you're all good. So yeah, I think uh, they've done a pretty good job here. He rolls pretty easy. This is a low friction surface, so the wheels don't roll very well. If you put him on something that's got slightly higher friction, you can see he does a fine job as far as the rolling goes. So yeah, overall, uh, alt mode definitely outshines the robot mode, in my opinion. It's just a real pain in the butt to get him into this alt mode. But once he's here, uh, he's definitely one of the better looking cars. Uh, as far as uh, what we've seen recently coming out of the mainline uh, toys for the movies. Now we'll just go ahead and jump right into the alt mode comparisons, starting off with this first one, which is my G1 Jazz. And it only makes sense to bring Jazz in because, hey, he's a Porsche, unlike what Mirage was in his G1 life, which was that uh, Formula One style race car. Moving on to our next comparison, this is the Studio Series Deluxe Class Nightbird from that Rise of the Beast movie. And at first glance, these two look pretty good together, but the more I look at it, the more I feel like the scale is off. Either Nightbird is too small or Mirage is too big. I find it hard to believe that a, that a Porsche is that much taller and wider and overall bigger than that Nissan GTR, but maybe it's just me. And our next comparison doesn't have the right scaling either. This is the not Studio Series, but technically a Voyager class release for the Rise of the Beast movie. This is the uh, not Studio Series Voyager class Optimus Prime. And finally, just for fun, I figured I would go ahead and bring this guy in. This is the Fans Toys Phantasm, which is their take on a masterpiece scale G1 Mirage. That's it for the alt mode comparison, so let's go ahead and get Mirage transformed back into his bot mode. Thankfully, getting Mirage back into his robot mode isn't as bad as getting him into his alt mode, but it's still not a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and begin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the top on this guy, so just kind of get up under here between the roof and the windows and give this a pull. And that's just held on with friction, so just uh, release that right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back, back here to the back and we're going to take this wing area right here. And we're just going to bring this down like that. And that's going to let you see those tabs right there that's going to reveal those tabs. Next thing that I'm going to do, this isn't necessarily in the instructions, but it's something that I've learned to do, is I'm going to take these wheel wells right here and I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to push right here. And I am going to disconnect those wheels those wheel wells right there from those tabs and what that allows me to do is it gives me a little bit more access because you have a tab here and a tab here that really hold on tight for this back window and it can be a real pain so I'm just going to disconnect those right there and that's going to give me a little bit more freedom to be able to pry on this window and get it out of there so it's not the easiest thing in the world to do here there's just not a lot of room to do it so anything that I can do to give myself an advantage I'm going to do that so there we go and pull out and then right there you can see these huge tabs that I'm talking about 
that just tuck in down here on either side. So that can be a huge pain. So that's the easiest way that I found to do it. If somebody knows a better way, please let me know. I would love to know. Now I'm going to take this roof piece right here and then I'm going to fold it up right here above. So it's sitting like that. And then I'm going to take this entire, entire assembly right here. I'm going to bring it like this and then it's going to be sitting on a double hinge. But for now, I'm just going to let it sit like that. Eventually we're going to get to the point where we're going to collapse it in like that. You can do it now. You can do it later. Normally I do it later, but hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and just leave it there now. So what? All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is disconnect these uh, doors right here. So they're held on on little tabs on either side right here. So you're just going to lift up on those. Uh, one thing, I almost did it again. If you have not removed his weapon, go ahead and remove his weapon. So go ahead and take that out, put it off to the side. Now I'm going to take those doors and I'm going to lift those up off those tabs right there. So you've got yourself a gap. Do that on both sides. Come on back out. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and split this. You could have done it later or earlier. You could do it now. doesn't really matter. And then once you have all that, now what you're going to need to do is pull this area right here. So this is actually going to extend out. So you're just going to start giving this a wiggle. You can see how that is starting to split right there. So you're just going to keep, if you want to pull those legs a little bit apart, you can, but you're just going to keep giving this a pull until all that comes loose. And then try to find you the best view. If you look right here, all that's going to extend out. So you need to take that from where it was to bringing it down and straightening it out and bringing that forward. So that's how you should have it after you're done. I know it wasn't easy to see. It's sitting there on a double hinge. It's really hard to get a good camera view of what you have to do there. Hopefully you caught it. My apologies if it didn't is if it didn't catch on camera as uh, good as it should. But once you have that there, now you can go ahead and just bring those legs down. So now you can see the fronts of those legs. I'm going to go ahead and do this now and get it out of my way. I'm going to rotate that waist 180 degrees. There we go. And then make sure that I collapse all that back. And everything runs into everything on this guy. So you should have something that looks like that. And what I'm going to do now, since the legs are split, I'm going to go ahead and bring these. Don't forget to bring your toes down. And then bring these feet. And I'm going to rotate those 180 degrees so they're sitting like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these doors down. But in order to bring those doors down, you have to move these wheels out of your way and then you have to move these wheel wells. All right. So those wheels are sitting on a little bit of a double hinge themselves. All you're going to do here is just grab that wheel and pull that up and bring it over. So it's going to be sitting right in the middle, just like that instead of offset like this one is. All right. So just lift that wheel up and bring it over. Once you do that, now you can collapse these wheel wells down to get them out of your way. And then I'm going to concentrate on this door panel right here. I'm just going to find that door panel and I'm going to rotate that down. And then as you do that, this is going to be your approximately your final resting spot for that wheel well. So once you get him about right here, this is essentially a finished leg. Okay. So the same thing over here, kind of get that out of your way. So it's not running into anything and then bring this door down. And before you get it all the way down, go ahead and take that wheel. Well, bring that back up and make sure they don't run into each other. Move that leg. There we go. And then bring that down. So yeah, after all that struggle, there you go. You've got two finished legs. Good times. All right. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to take these two little pieces right here and I'm just going to pop them loose from everything else. That's going to give me the room that I need to disconnect these headlights right here at this gap. So just going to grab that and then you can see you've got little tabs 
right in there. Once you have that disconnected, that's going to give you the ability to take these wheels and pop those wheels up just like this out of your way. And get those up and clear them. Now that you've got those clear, now you've made room for the arms. So now you need to take the arms and just kind of pop those out of place right there. And you, they're hard to see. Right back in there, you've got little tabs, and that's what that's going to rest on. So when you pull that, that's where it's going to disconnect from. And then you're going to bring these arms up. They're sitting here on these double hinges right here. So give that a pull, and then bring it up again like that. And then you've got an arm in the right place. So do the same thing over here. Give this a pull and bring that one up. And then you've got two arms in about the right place. Now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to straighten his head just to make sure. And then we're going to pull these the rest of the way down. So give that a pull or a push right there. And then that's going to disconnect this area right here. And then you can bring that down past Mirage's head. Once you get it past his head, then you're going to take these two pieces right here and you're going to push them together. So they're literally just going to push together like this. And then you'll notice you've got two little tabs right there. And then you have this slotted area right there in the chest. So what you're going to do, you're going to bring this down and then you're going to just push that in right there. And then that's where those are going to rest. Give a push right here near his shoulders. And then you'll feel that click in right there. And then you've got that secured. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take care of all this junk going on back here. So again, with everything in my way, you have this assembly right here that's sitting on this hinge. So if you can see where it rotates like that, I am going to, this is why it's important that you make sure that you've got his crotch set up the way it should be. So hopefully you can see it in there. So you can see it should be configured like that. And then I'm going to bring this down and then I'm going to just give that a push. And then that's going to rest right there, right back in that area right there. Now that we have that, now we can take these headlights and we're going to fold these headlights down like this. And then we're going to take this whole thing right here. And then this just pushes in. It's just held in by friction. It's pretty good at what it does. So just be careful as you bring that down. You want them sitting like this. You don't want the lights sitting like that where you can see them straight ahead like he's going to light up the world. You want them pushed down like this and then give this a push right here and then push that right in. And then all that sits together and it does a fine job of firming up this backpack. So nothing's going to shake or come loose on you at all. And then the last thing that you need to do, don't forget, is the fists. Just tilt those forward and then find a way to get him to stand, even if it's a little cockeyed. And there you have Mirage back in his bot mode. For our first bot mode comparison, here we see that Studio Series Mirage next to my G1 Mirage. This isn't exactly a fair comparison simply because he's old and broken and he's in half and he should be a little bit taller, but his legs won't support his weight anymore. So kind of give you the idea there just as a point of reference. Moving on to our next comparison, I think this one's kind of fun simply because uh, it's the Noah Diaz uh, core class exosuit and the, this exosuit is made from Mirage, right? So you've got a lot of the same design elements and some cues there between the two. Uh, I will say without a doubt, uh, this hand cannon is much better than that hand cannon. Our next comparison is also a Studio Series Deluxe Class. This is that Deluxe Class Rise of the Beasts Studio Series Nightbird. Unfortunately, at the time of this recording, I do not yet have the Rise of the Beasts Optimus Prime Studio Series figure. So this is the next best thing. This is the Studio Series Voyager Class Optimus Prime from the 2018 Bumblebee movie. 
Next up, this is the Studio Series Voyager class Rhinox from the Rise of the Beasts. And last but certainly not least, uh, just for fun, I figured I would bring this figure in since I brought in my G1 Jazz for the alt mode comparison. This is the Fans Toys Jive. This is their take on a masterpiece scaled G1 Jazz. That's going to do it for the bot mode comparison, so let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts. So there you have the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Rise of the Beasts Mirage. And for me, this figure is a disappointment. I think that there is no mistaking the fact that alt mode came first and bot mode was a bit of an afterthought. But let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with the overall looks of the figure, the aesthetic that he brings. As I just stated, the bot mode is not great. Uh, he's just kind of chunky. He's got a lot of stuff hanging off of him everywhere. Doesn't really look like what we saw in the movie. And those feet, they're just ugly. I don't like the feet at all. I don't like the fact that you've got a bit of that Porsche whale tail sticking on the inside right in here. That's it's just really distracting. Uh, the alt mode, of course, it looks great, uh, minus all the panel lines, particularly in the front near the hood. But there's only so much you can do at this price point, so I have a level of forgiveness there. But obviously, this being officially licensed by Porsche, they're going to get that Porsche mode uh, looking as good as possible at the sacrifice of the bot mode, and it's pretty obvious here. So uh, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 for overall looks, but a majority of that score is coming from the fact that the alt mode looks as good as it does. The only thing I could really complain about on the alt mode minus the panel lines would be if they could have added some paint on the wheels to differentiate the wheels from the tires. But other than that, that thing looks really good. So moving on to the articulation, this is another level of disappointment for me. The articulation is there if you can access it. The problem that you're going to have is there's just so much everything hanging off everywhere. You're going to run into interference between these door panels and this backpack so many times. You're going to run into the interference with the feet, with the whale tails on the inside. You're going to run into interference with the uh, shoulders, all that stuff hanging off the shoulders up there. Uh, the head is on a ball joint you get the slightest bit of articulation up down and tilt on that head but not as much as what i feel like you should have so i think the articulation is there you just are not going to be able to use it that that waist rotation i have that turned about as much as you're going to get out of it and he's in a bit of an upright pose instead of a true action pose because frankly those door panels just keep getting in the way of everything. So I find it incredibly frustrating to try to pose this guy. Uh, even though the articulation is there, the geometry doesn't allow it. So I'm going to ding him a little bit on articulation. I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Moving on to the accessories, or the accessory singular in this case. Wow, another disappointment. Uh, I'm almost angry about this one because there was great opportunity there. I can almost forgive the fact that it is just a piece of gray molded plastic and they didn't add any paint to it, didn't really take their time to do a lot of detailing, but look at the size of that hole right there. They could have added rifling, they could have made it blast effect compatible. You could have had something like this popping out of that and that would have added the next dimension. So huge miss as far as I'm concerned, huge disappointment. The biggest thing I can say about that accessory is it's got really cool uh, vehicle storage. Other than that, this thing is junk. I'm not happy about it. Uh, they're lucky that I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Moving on to overall quality. Yeah, that I guess this is the one bright point for this figure. Overall quality is pretty good. If you take the feet, the ball joint feet out of the equation, all the other joints are tight and everything does tab in incredibly securely once you get it there. So he does all those things that he's supposed to do. I, one aspect that I can't say if I did it during transformation or if it's just how he came, I didn't look that closely beforehand, is the more I look at this guy, the more I see that silver paint is chipped or not quite as good as it could be. So that's a little bit of a disappointment as well. So just something to keep in mind uh, if you pick this guy up. Uh, just be really careful with that paint. And you are, w without a doubt, inevitably going to have some rubbing just the way that this guy transforms and comes together, there's going to be some paint rub. So that's a little bit of a letdown as well. The ball joints in the ankles, I'm going to put that as a design uh, flaw, not necessarily design flaw, but just a poor design choice. I think they could have done something better there, but as it stands right now, the ball joints in my feet are starting to get loose. 
So it's only a matter of time before I'm going to have to do something about that. So overall quality, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. So that brings us to our last point, which is overall value. Man, this is a tough one. So I will start off by saying that I did find this figure in the wild. I found this guy at a GameStop here in North America, and I paid the MSRP of $25. That is the price for deluxe class figures nowadays, so I'm not knocking the $25, but I am saying I don't know if this figure should be that price. I, I think that there's a little bit of good here, but there's more bad than there is good. He is not at all fun to transform. There's really no joy in it. I, I don't enjoy it. Uh, getting him into his alt mode is more of a pain than getting him back into his bot mode. But either one, it just feels like sometimes things tab in too stinking hard. There's too much uh, geometry rubbing up on each other. Uh, too many small areas, especially for somebody if you have bigger hands, to try to get in and access and get everything put together the way it should. So that's kind of a pain. I mentioned earlier the paint, uh, not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, and then, of course, the suffering of the bot mode to get that alt mode right. I just think that there are a lot of things here that ding him as far as value goes. So I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 overall for value. So that brings us to our grand total. Out of a possible 50 points, the Studio Series Mirage gets 36 out of 50, which puts him at 72%. I'm not going to recommend this figure. This is... Not something that I'm going to tell you to rush out and find. I I was so excited about this guy. They took so long to get him out, and I was really looking forward to him. And he's just been a bust, in my opinion. So unless you're a hardcore collector and you need to get every single one of the figures that was in the movie, this is maybe something that you could skip. I will tell you that younger kids are not going to enjoy him. He's not fun to pose. He's not fun to transform. Alt mode looks good. That's about the best that I can say about it. Uh, one last thing that I will say is I am looking forward. I know it's going to happen. I just don't know when I am looking forward to a third party company doing Mirage right. So if you look at something along the lines of the lockdown, the unique toys had their Peru kill version of lockdown, which is absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to something like that for Mirage. Uh, it's just a matter of time and, uh, I'll be sure to pick that up when it comes out. So that's going to wrap up the review. I hope you guys got some good information. I hope you got some entertainment out of it. Apologies for my subdued attitude in this one. This guy was just such a letdown. Um, it was hard to bring the enthusiasm, I guess. So with that, that's going to wrap it up. Um, if you haven't already done so, uh, please be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment if you feel like it. Uh, and one last favor to ask, uh, this may not be the best example as far as this video goes, but if you know of anyone that might like what we do at this channel or like the videos that we make, uh, if I could ask you to please share that video with them, share the channel with them. It's always fun to see the community grow. So until we see you guys in the next review, take care.